Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another Shop Talk video, and today's topic is going to be the infamous parts store diagnosis, which we all pretty much hate if you're a mechanic. Now, before we go ahead and get into the topic, guys, I do want to say that if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. Fast forward to today in the morning, uh, which is the reason why I'm making this video. I had a customer call me, tell me that they wanted to bring their car to my shop. They had their car diagnosed by a parts store and they told them that they need a right front ABS speed sensor. And I proceeded to ask them what the car was doing because most cars don't need to be towed in because of ABS speed sensor. And they told me that the car will not move in any gear selection, whether it be reverse or drive. Uh, it just won't move and I proceeded to tell them that sometimes uh, that does not uh, happen with just the ABS wheel speed sensor going out uh, at worst case you have an ABS light on and the ABS may activate upon you hitting the brakes but I've never seen one really stall out a transmission not let it move or anything so I told the customer that if they wanted to bring the car in I can diagnose it and look at it for them um, you know there would be a charge associated with that and they just flat out refused and said nope I already had it diagnosed so what am I going to pay you for and uh, I just simply told them okay well unfortunately I can't really help you out with it and uh, you know just proceeded to uh, let it be and uh, they're probably calling another shop telling them the same thing so for those of you that are mechanics know exactly where I'm coming from when I say this for those of you that are consumers you may be a little bit you know I guess you can say uh, questionable on this you may be questioning it and here's the thing guys when you go to a parts store and they hook up their code reader and they pull a code what they usually do is they pull the code let's say it's an oxygen sensor stuck lean code they'll take you inside the store print out a piece of paper that has all this information about an oxygen sensor and then they proceed to sell you a part that's how parts stores work that's how they make their money i've even covered this topic a little bit in another video where uh, the parts store misdiagnosed and almost uh, you know cost the customer a lot of money but either way uh, that's a whole separate video but uh, when a parts store does this I mean it's simply uh, the reason why they only even offer to do this is because they want to sell you a part at a really high margin make their money that's the end all of all when it comes to it and I'm not gonna say that all the time what they're diagnosing and air quotations because it's not really a diagnostic uh, sometimes they, it could be accurate uh, if you get a stuck lean oxygen sensor code and they pull it and they sell you an oxygen sensor you replace it I mean it's not uncommon for an oxygen sensor to go through that and get stuck lean so replacing the sensor would fix that issue but on the off chance you have that code and it's because let's say a wire is broken or you have a power issue and your oxygen sensor isn't receiving the right powers and grounds and signals then you'll get the same code but you're not going to be able to fix it with just an oxygen sensor you're going to have to go further up and the best way i like to explain this to people at least my customers is i give them the analogy of you go to a doctor's office you tell them your arm hurts you can move it and everything and they tell you oh we got to cut it off and put a new arm on a lot of you are going to question that be like whoa whoa doc i'm not going to do that like can you do an x-ray can you see if it's broken or what the case is or do some other preliminary test and that's kind of how i describe a uh, part store diagnostic to people where you just go to the doctor and they just you know hit you with the one thing that it could be they don't actually try to get in there and figure out what is going on and uh, that is what the case is now this particular call and this customer that called me in i'm pretty sure that that transmission had failed or had a uh, failure to it uh, i don't think it was just as simple as an abs sensor uh, so that's why i just kind of let it go because if they're adamant about it there's nothing you're going to do to change your mind now that we know what we just talked about and we have a good understanding of it the same example with that oxygen sensor stuck lean guys i'm going to show you guys or at least tell you about how a proper diagnosis should happen now the comparison is the part store one hook up the scanner give you a little sheet of paper says it it's an oxygen sensor, has a description, they sell you oxygen sensor, you install it, if it doesn't fix the issue, you just probably wasted $150, you can't return that oxygen sensor because it's an electronic component and you're pretty much stuck with it. And then you're stuck going to a mechanic and you're gonna be paying them to uh, you know, diagnose it. Now, when you bring the car into a shop, 
and we do a real diagnostic. Now, most diagnostics are paid, and I know uh, some people hate that fact that they have to pay someone to tell them what's wrong with it. But you know what, guys? It comes with the experience, and uh, you know, no one bought, nobody works for free. It's as simple as that. Uh, so basically, you bring the car into a shop. They're going to pull the code. They are going to be using a scanner or a code reader, whatever they have available to them. Let's say they pull that code and it's a oxygen sensor stuck lean. Uh, they're going to go ahead and test out your oxygen sensor. Now they can do this a variety of ways. They can ohm it using a voltage meter. They can use their scanner and just see how the numbers are switching on it if it's working correctly. And they're gonna deem the oxygen sensor to be either good or bad based on that. Now for this scenario, let's say the oxygen sensor is good but let's say they're not getting a good signal coming from the ECM or let's say there's a power or a ground issue. What they're gonna do in turn from that point on is go ahead and proceed and diagnose that issue because we have figured out that our oxygen sensor is good, it's just not getting the proper signals or powers and grounds from wherever its sources are and now we have to tackle that. That is the root cause of the issue, not the actual sensor itself. Now this is the difference where a mechanic can save you money and not have you just buy a part for no reason. Because if that sensor is good and the wiring is bad, you're going to have to worry about what's going on with the wiring. Let's say a rat or something got in there, chewed it up. Let's say we have a blown fuse or a bad ground and it happens. And the best uh, scenario that I have for this, I'm going to share this story with you guys as well, is that I had a customer come into the shop once, their car was not starting, just nothing, no click, nothing. And they took it to a parts store or I don't know how it was, but someone basically sold them a starter at a parts store, told them it was a bad starter. They get the car towed to me, and uh, I went ahead and I put the starter on. I figured it's a starter. Um, it's obviously not doing anything, so, you know, parts stores probably got it right this time. Go ahead and do it and uh, install the new part, and sure enough, the car does not start whatsoever. Uh, I call the customer, let them know, and they're like, well, what's going on, this and that. I might have to diagnose it. They were a little adamant, but like, sure, go ahead. We got to get it fixed. And of all things, guys, there was a bad body ground uh, where the starter pretty much pulled all of its ground from. And that's why the car wasn't doing anything. No click, nothing. But everything else worked. It was imitating a starter. But they could have saved probably a good uh, few hundred dollars by just getting it diagnosed. Uh, the ground would have probably cost them like 100, 150 bucks to fix with parts and labor versus spending three or 400 dollars on a starter and then fixing the actual root of the problem. And that's the big takeaway. Your parts store diagnosis versus your mechanic diagnostic. Uh, we get to the root cause of it. They're just going based off whatever the symptom code is. Two different things. Uh, you never want to just go based off symptom codes. You actually have to test. You have to look into things further. And that's how mechanics typically do it. That's why a diagnostic is a paid item usually where you're paying them for their time. Um, and again, I know a lot of people hate that. That's why a lot of people don't like their cars getting diagnosed. It's actually probably... 99.9% .9 of the time the reason why they don't bring it to a shop and they go to your variety parts stores for the free code scan because they figure they'll save a couple bucks but in reality if you wind up saving a couple bucks from a diagnosis but you get a part that's not really the root cause of your issue and that cost you a couple bucks at the end of the day what did you really save you wound up losing more than you ever saved because sometimes you're going to be spending twice that amount to be able to fix your vehicle but either way guys I just wanted to make this video kind of brush on these points uh, it's never a good idea to just uh, go in with a part or a diagnosis from a part store, which is, uh, like I said, just a code read uh, to your mechanic and tell them replace this because sometimes it may wind up biting you. And most shops will take it, some won't. I'm kind of 50-50 scale now. I mean, some I take if they're adamant about it, and I will explain things out to them, and then some of them I just won't take, uh, like the one I had today where, you know, I'm pretty sure the transmission might have been blown on that vehicle. But either way, guys, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.